Hello, this is a new tutorial. I'd like to talk a little bit about Autodesk Revit uh, rendering with V-Ray. Uh, this is a continuous tutorial based on the previous one. I covered uh, the basic default Revit material, how to assign material to object, how to set up lighting, how to set up uh, the basic renderings. So this tutorial, I will mainly focus on the V-Ray uh, if you do have this plugin available in a CGC computer, uh, you can uh, apply some visual materials, visual lighting. Uh, the rendering performance is really good, very fast compared to the default Revit rendering. Uh, so before we get started, just quickly uh, want to talk about in the default uh, Revit material, you can see this is all the current material loaded into the project. Uh, so just keep in mind, this is a long list. Uh, in the future, you can replace some of this material with very material. Uh, so the very library will kick in and override uh, the rabbit material. Uh, so that's one thing you can you can do with V-Ray. Another thing I did, uh, just a quick um, extra objects here. I put a couple of trees there. I put a generic model, uh, which is you can easily model here uh, by model in place. You can just create a box. Uh, in this model, if I uh, added uh, the in place, uh, you can see I have several materials applied already. And here, if I go to modify, I can go to assign material. And here you can see the, uh, this is the place you can, you know, if you want to test thing, you can create a few new materials that you can apply that directly into the surface okay so this is how <clears throat> you can manipulate uh, the rabbit uh, objects and also here i created a new uh, 3d view with a camera and then if i do a quick very render i just want to show you here i use my current view 3d view 5 and then i will set up my quality to draft uh, the resolution to a really low one because you want to do test you don't need a high resolution 800 600 should be fine then i will render interactive uh, so as a result you can see the rendering looks like this all right so i will show you everything how you can set up this material the lighting hdri background image and how to manipulate uh, the rendering style in this case uh, you can see here is a hidden line uh, all this is called uh, the uh, tone shader, which gives you the black line, like an ink, uh, outline the geometries. Okay. Another thing I want to show you is whenever you click Render Interactive, you see this one is in the background. It's always trying to refresh. Uh, so if you're done, you can actually click Stop. So it's not really continue taking the uh, resource anymore. Right. So I will start from scratch how to do this step by step. Uh, so first thing I want to do is I do want to set up a quick, um, as you can see, this is just a default uh, structural template from Revit. I'm going to set up a camera. I want to do a section perspective because um, I don't want to render the whole building. I only want to render some part of uh, the whole building. So here I will go to um, I believe it's in the view. I'm going to set up a new camera right here. Okay, so camera. And I, maybe I want to start uh, look the building from maybe this angle. Okay, so basically you create a default. Uh, this is called 3D view 6. That's okay. I will accept the name. Um, then if you see through this camera, you can definitely see the building. You can make adjustment about your view angles, right? That looks pretty good. Uh, in this case, if you actually holding shift and the middle view, middle button, you can actually change the uh, orientation or the angle of the camera. Uh, so that's a pretty quick way. If you wanna make minor adjustment, you can easily do that, okay? Uh, so this is by holding shift, okay? So if I'm pretty happy with this angle, uh, then the next thing I'm gonna do is create a section box. Okay, so here if I do uh, check section box, 
and hit apply, you see a section box right here. It's a little bit difficult to actually uh, drag the section box in this way. Uh, it's just because you know you are in a perspective view. Uh, it's hard to position the box in the right uh, location. So in this case, uh, you could actually go back to your level one. This is the place I create the camera, right? Then you can right click uh, 3D view six, and then I will choose show section box. Okay, so you see the section box will show up here. Um, you can also do right click you know, show camera if you want. So you can see the camera. So it's a pretty handy. You can overlay another views property on top of your level one. Right. So here, for example, I just want to show a portion of the uh, the building. So I will cut a section box like this way. Maybe here, here. I want to make it really small. Okay, so I drag the section box like that. So now if I go back to the 3D view, you see the section box start to cut part of the building out, right? So here you can see the sections. Maybe that's the part I wanna you know, focus on. So I wanna actually switch here. And maybe I wanna drag the section box to the bottom because I don't need the foundation. Maybe I wanna cut this way here. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I want to up this a little bit so I can see the sections. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I want to continue drag this section box this way so it cut even more. Okay, so I think this is a pretty good uh, section drawing, right? Section perspective. All right, so I'm done. Then I'm going ahead uh, to do a render. Right, so go back to V-Ray. This is my current view. I will do a couple of settings. So still, I want to keep everything as a draft. I want to keep a low resolution. I would do an initial quick render. But before that, I do want to show you basic lighting. Uh, by default, you can use three type of uh, lights. I will start with the first one, no lights. Okay. So when you do no lights, and uh, it's basically using a gray color as your background, and then uh, you could make a background image overlay, or just keep as uh, you know gray. So now if I do a render, that should not have any lights, right? The building looks totally black. Oh, the reason why it's still using the old view, let me stop, is because here it's still using the View five, so make sure you switch to view six, and then I will do another rendering. Okay, here we go. Right, you see the uh, the lights actually doesn't really uh, happen at all. It's just black because you have no lights. Right. Um, yeah. So that's basically what you want to do. In, in some case, if you want something very conceptual or diagrammatic, this is the best way. You just set up the, you know, maybe a white background, then you set up these no lights, uh, it just rendered the building like this. Cool. All right, in my case, I actually want to use other options. So first, let's choose very sun. Um, probably I want to turn on the background image. So let's give a little bit background. So here you see the very sun has the intensity, has a size. You can play with these settings. They basically give you the different um, uh, illuminations on the on the uh, on the environment. Uh, you can also control the orientation of the sun. Uh, this can be done by uh, adjust the location, just exactly the same as um, uh, as the uh, rabbit default sun. Uh, so I think I will just leave that to you. You could, you guys could check that out in the sun settings. Okay, so I'm not gonna repeat here. So that's how you can control the sun intensity and the sun size. Okay, you can also control a little bit about reflections from the ground. Uh, you can make a very strong reflection or very weak one by manipulating these values. Uh, the last one is the background. I think we already covered. You know, right now this has a maybe this is a beach I guess uh, but again you know you can change the orientation just by dragging this uh, so you can see the background will update right. 
Yeah, you can also you know loading a new uh, custom background. Uh, right now the C rocks. I think this is the default from the C drive. You can see this location right is HDR image, high dynamic range image. That's actually leading to the next option, uh, the dome light, uh, which is using HDR image to casting the light. So this is, the light is a little bit different from the sunlight. You don't have that super strong shadow anymore, uh, but you have this lighting come from this ambient um, skylight. So here, if you change the orientation of the uh, of the image, right, you can also see the orientation of the uh, HDR image. is is a good idea to make them match. So this is 109. I probably want to do the 109 as well. And you can see this building will start to change the color, right? Because the lighting information has come from the HDR image. It's not come from the sun anymore. So if you do have these two matched together, uh, you will get a pretty nice accurate re representation of the lights. All right, so that's about uh, the very lights. Uh, so play with it. Um, I think in my opinion, I will stay with the HDR image uh, for the lighting uh, but for the sake of rendering i probably don't need the background later i can use photoshop uh, to replace a new one okay so i will leave that this way the next thing i like to talk quickly about the uh, other options available uh, in uh, in various so number one is about this uh, asset editor uh, this is the place you can control the material uh, so this is more like equivalent to material editor in other program like Max Maya or Rhino so once you open the asset editor you can see here is my current visual material I loaded uh, before I do the demo uh, and also I loaded a few textures uh, like edges leather and uh, stucco so if you do want to add this new material uh, you can always, uh, you know, by adding them in. This is basically a display filter. So here, if I click this arrowhead, I can expand uh, this to the left. And here you can see the library available. Uh, by default, we saved everything uh, into a local. So in fact, if you go to the uh, C drive, you should be able to see there is a folder called V-Ray. Uh, I probably don't want to show you right now. Uh, well, let's, let's, right now let's, let's show that. It's a little bit uh, strange because you have too many windows open. Uh, so here, <clears throat> if I go to C drive, you should be able to see there is a folder called V-Ray. Uh, I think it's under the chaos. So chaos group v-ray and here you can see the v-ray for Revit, and you can see the library and the materials right? under the materials this is all the default material so in the future if you do create your own material like a vr mat format you can actually transfer to a different computer you can even load this into other program like max or sketchup right so this is the location for the material all right, so let's go back here. Let me actually stop the rendering. And uh, let's reopen these menus. So you have actually this actual uh, uh, window uh, float on top of uh, Revit. So here is a default material. Uh, it is a pretty large and really nice. You can decide which one you like. Uh, for example, I want to just find something like a brick. So we can go to bricks, and you find brick here. I'll find some wood, tiles. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Right. So whenever you decide, hey, I want to use this material, uh, you just need to right click, add to sim. So basically, you load this material into your current project. Right. So it's kind of like a duplicate from the library into your project. Once you have this in the project, then you are able to assign this material to override the other Revit material, or you can use it uh, to override the entire thing if you want. 
So that is a basic process how you can uh, create your own uh, customized material uh, for your project. So here, once I loaded in this into my project, then I can click this right button. I can open up and I can see this one is composed with diffuse channel, with reflection channel, bitmap for bump. Right, so this is very similar like the one we covered previously or in our lecture, how this shader is composed by different maps or different channels. Uh, it's the same idea here. You can definitely change the color, or if you like, sometimes you can even change the uh, the texture. Right? right now this is a JPEG file, but if you download a new one, you can replace this one. Right? Same thing for bitmap. You can see here is a bump mapping. Uh, I don't want to repeat here, it's covered in other tutorials probably. You can see this is all the bitmap. Usually the gray color will control the bump. Okay, So that's all there you can replace. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the current uh, laminate floor, for instance. Uh, then I want to apply this to my rendering. So let's see how we can do it. So first, uh, let me just create a quick rendering. Uh, before I do that, I just want to go to setting really quick. Yeah, setting is a place you can control uh, more advanced uh, settings related to the engine. Um, by default, I use a CODA CUDA. Uh, this is using the GPA to, uh, uh, GPU to control the rendering. It's a little bit faster than the CPU. Um, other than that, I don't really, you know, mess around other settings. Um, in default, um, you just keep everything as the default is pretty good. Uh, you don't want to do swarm because we, are, we don't have the license to do the network rendering. All right, so this is the settings. Uh, in the appearance manager, uh, let me do that really quick. Here you have a global overwrite. Uh, let me just disable this because I did this earlier. Global override will temporarily uh, replace uh, some uh, look uh, of your, you know, for example, all the opaque material can be swapped to a different material. Uh, so that is a you know, really quick way you can change the rendering style. Okay. So right now I don't have any control. Uh, it's just a default. Okay. So now let's just do a quick rendering just to take a look what this uh, environment that uh, this rendering looks like. Okay, so I have different materials right there. And my point is I want to use this one maybe to this uh, box. Just make it show up. Okay, so let's do that. So first I select this geometry, uh, this shader, make sure this is active shader you selected. You can see its colors became blue, right? That means your active shader. Uh, then I will select this guy uh, you can really apply the, if you go to modify, you can really apply the shader here because this is a generic objects. So you have to go to edit in place. Uh, where is it? Okay, here, edit in place. How oh, do I need to add it in place? I think so. Then you can apply this uh, shader to it. Okay, finish. Now you should have this new material show up. Right. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I have this override. Uh, let's go back to the V-Ray Appearance Manager. Global. If you right click, you can choose from the options. I think previously I changed everything to angle blend. This is actually a conceptual. Let me just show you what exactly what I have used before. Angle blend, you can actually find it in, uh, yeah, you can actually find it in the library. Also here, if you go to, let me expand this all. If you go to diagrammatic, you can find a bunch of special shaders. Some of them will render the wireframe. 
some of them will render the edges. Uh, this is a really powerful one if you want to use uh, to render the, the line work. So here I have wireframe white, which is this. I have angle blend, which reinforces the edges. So what I did is, once you have this in your project, in a global override, if you right click, not left click, right click, you can choose any material to override the current default material. So if I choose this to white, you see what happened is everything here will be rendered with a with an edge with a white color. Uh, because I'm using the global light from HDR, it has some orange tone, but this has come from the background lighting, right? It's not come from the material. So this is the way you can actually change the look of the rendering. But if you delete, uh, they go back to the default. Right? So just keep in mind, you have a way to override uh, all the materials with something new. So here, if I want to override everything with my new uh, floor laminate, I can choose this. So you see everything looks like a wood right, material. Uh, so you can do that, or you can delete, then it's going back to the default. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty much about how you can apply um, this material to individual objects. Uh, so here, if I go back to manage, um, actually modify, and then I will apply, right? And then I can uh, pick uh, the material on apply. So this is how you can quickly change the look uh, of, a, of a geometry. Uh, let's go back to laminate as my default. Right. Okay, so let's continue. I think my computer has a little bit glitch a few seconds ago. So let's continue to talk about the material really quick. Uh, so first, uh, just to refresh, we have two set of materials, right? One is a default Revit material, another is a very material. For Revit default material, you can always go to modify, you go to here, tent, and here you can see this is all the Revit material. Uh, for instance, just one of, for the sake of demo, uh, if I want to apply something like, uh, for example, a brick or concrete, right, I can go to concrete precast, and then I can you know simply click the surface, and I click the surface, right. So this rabbit material will be applied to that surface. Uh, you they don't really um, immediately refresh here in V-Ray. Um, you have to actually just close or just use escape to close the menu. Then you can see it's kick in. Uh, so that's a kind of a little bit tricky. You have to uh, complete your rabbit material assignment, then it start to stream into uh, Viri. So you can see Viri has a perfect way to translate rabbit material into its own engine. So here you can see the precast concrete looks pretty real. Right? That looks really nice. And you can you know, do the same thing for uh, other geometries. For this one, this one needs a little bit extra work because uh, you can't really apply it to the generic model. I have to go to edit in place, uh, then you can apply. But you know, you got the point. Uh, this is the concrete. All right, this is the rabbit material. Uh, maybe let's do that just in case. Since it's, it's a little bit easier, you can see that in a larger uh, surface. So here I have this concrete precast as my default. So if I click to apply that, then you can finish the model, then you'll use you know, escape, then you'll see this concrete right, show up here. So that looks pretty nice. Then let's talk another option uh, about the rabbit material, uh, sorry, the very material. Uh, so now if you go to Asset Editor, right? This is all available. Let me just uh, show you. This is all available current uh, varying materials in a project, right? So just keep that in mind. So now, if I go to Appearance Manager, and you have the option to individually override the Revit material to 
with uh, the varying material. For example, here you can see I already did one for break. So that means whatever Revit break common will be replaced by wireframe white. Right? So this doesn't really make sense, but you know this is the way you can have your customized way to translate uh, Revit into Vray. So here, if I want to do, for example, concrete, right? You have the concrete, you have the precast, uh, cast in situ, cast in place, right? I think this is the one we used precast, right? So here, if I right click, you do have the way to override. So I know probably I want to just do something really quick. I want to replace all the bricks, uh, all the you know cast uh, in place, a uh, precast concrete into bricks just for the stick of demo. Right, so now you can see they looks like bricks, right? You can also close this. I can switch maybe this to something else. I want to change all of this concrete into, I don't know, maybe wireframe with white color. Then you see they became white, right? Yeah, because I have HDRI image uh, for lighting. The lighting has some orange color, right? You got the idea? If I do something like a 3D pen green, you see the green color there, right? So this is the quick way you can overwrite everything. Uh, depends on what previous uh, Revit material looks like. A nice thing about this way is uh, Vray still keep the Revit material untouched. So in the future, if you don't like the style, you can just simply disconnect uh, this translation. It's just all go back to the Revit. Right? So the nice thing is, for people who do not have Vray engine, it doesn't really damage the project at all. You just have a translation layer there on top. There are other um, settings. Um, I think I can show you really quick. If you switch uh, the precast concrete to bricks, just show you again. You see the color looks like a brick now, but maybe the you know the scale doesn't look right. Uh, the reason is this is the UV control the scale. Right, so if you think, well, how big is that brick or forces the concrete? So you could actually control this. So maybe this one, I want to have this, I don't know, just make it a little bit extreme. Just add a zero here. Right, so you see a bigger concrete, uh, sorry, the bigger brick scale show up. Maybe they have different, you know, uh, scales uh, you can translate to. So let's control the scale. You have 10 times bigger break than the previous one, okay? And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much about the, um, the individual material uh, override versus global override. Uh, you can also do override based on objects. So here's all the objects there, based on the categories, planting. Uh, you have trees, this is all the trees I have. Um, but again, you know, this may be something we can worry about this in the future. We are not going to translate this, you know, generic model into a tree. Uh, but you could in Revit and V-Ray. Okay, I think that's pretty much about the, um, the override. Let me do this one more time, just to show you how to do the conceptual model. Um, again, if you do want to just get a hidden line, uh, you can actually do this in Revit without using V-Ray. You can do a hidden line style, you can export into a PDF or Illustrator, then you can do the layers right in Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, in V-Ray, you can do something similar like this by using the override. Uh, but here, I probably want to use override with the not laminate wood, but right click using the wireframe white. So here if I zoom in, let me switch the lighting so it's a little bit easier, you can see. I will do the no lights. Uh, oh, no lights doesn't give anything. It looks like a black now. Let's do the sunlight. I think that's a little bit easier because sunlight doesn't have too much uh, you know, orange color. right? So here you can see the white uh, wireframe will show up right here. Okay, so if you do want to edit this white um, wireframe, you can actually go back here. This is right, and you can control, for instance, edges. Right, 
you can control hey I want these edges be I don't know five pixels wide just for the sake of demo you can see this wireframe became pretty sick right maybe it's too much um, I can change the color to red you have this right color edge maybe I want to change this back to one right so you have this really nice uh, hidden line style on top of your shadowed uh, shaded uh, renderings right you can also do other settings want to display the hidden line or not display um yeah it's is all there quite straightforward you guys could play with it okay um let me see anything else uh background color i think it's pretty straightforward you can make it really bright uh, again, this is overlay with our lighting and shadow. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, this is oh, let me do one more thing about save the image. Right, I think this is something worth to to mention. So, for example, if I'm pretty happy with the current uh, image, what I do next? Right? A couple of ways. Uh, so first. Uh, you can click this show correction control you can control exposure you know a lot of photoshop stuff you can do it right here uh, then you can you know when you're happy with the settings then you can go to save to save the model as a png uh, but before that i probably want to do a higher resolution rendering right so let me stop the current one i'm going to set the rendering resolution to a higher uh, it really depends on what you want to uh, present maybe you want to print or maybe just want to show on the screen you can have different settings here uh, i will just for the sake of uh, demo do a little bit uh, actually this doesn't matter you just need to type the pixel dimension um, let me double this 1600 with 1200 so this will be like four times right in terms of the number of pixels double that and I will change the uh, rendering quality to production quality okay and this will take a longer time for sure uh, so you can see here uh, it using the very frame buffer uh, to render this and it's actually pretty fast because I'm using the GPU remember uh, in the settings I set the render to CUDA which is my GPU to handle that so it's super fast you got this rendering and you can zoom in you can see it's pretty sharp um, but maybe you know in this higher resolution maybe I want to change the pixel from 1 to 2 because you know sometimes this looks a little bit weird when you have a diagonal line uh, so that's something you can you can tweak let's do that really quick why not so here I want to change the edge to two all right so it's a little bit thicker now then i will do the render one more time okay now you got a pretty significant uh, edges you can zoom in because see it's pretty read pretty nicely uh, then i'm going to save it okay as png and then later i can manipulate in photoshop okay so test save all right i think that's pretty much about everything um i like to cover uh again you know this is very similar like photoshop i don't think i need to cover here and you can see the rendering once you save it is automatically available uh in in documents so let me open that show really quick I'll close this window, close this window, close this window, uh, close this window. I have too many windows. And here in the documents, yep, here we go. You have this image right here. Okay. And then you can continue modify in Photoshop. Okay, I think that's pretty much about what I want to cover today uh, for V-Ray. I hope this is going to be very useful.